everyone it is Danny and welcome to this updates video this evening I trust and hope that you're doing fantastic and we're gonna be taking a look at all that is happening across the North Atlantic we'll be looking at Philippe and by the way the tropical storm watch which was in effect for Bermuda has now been upgraded to a tropical storm warning as Philippe is expected to unleash those conditions across the island next day we want to talk about the areas to watch the Gulf of Mexico and we could potentially see something else develop in the main development region later this this month and there are currently two tropical waves out there one of which will be approaching the lesser antilles as we head into tomorrow increasing that rainfall chance for some areas and even that risk of some isolated flooding in some spots and so let's go ahead and zoom in but we're going to be kickstarting things looking at northern south america and there we can see a lot of shower and thunderstorm activity popping up across some areas especially venezuela and even parts of the guyanas the northern portion of the territory so there could be a bit of thunderstorms here and there maybe even some uh, instances of some heavy rainfall but for most of the territories it has been a pretty hot and dry day and there we can see all that moisture all that activity offshore associated with that approaching tropical wave now let's drift up to the north and there we can see that across the greater Antilles heading to the Bahamas and even over in the eastern Caribbean there is a lot of activity so Philippe is still looking very disheveled it might try to have a better presentation as we head into the next couple of days and it might even strengthen as well so we'll go on to the forecast in a moment uh, we're also seeing some thunderstorms starting to pop up across sections of Central America so uh, going back to the eastern Caribbean all that activity we're seeing all that moisture those showers thunderstorms are feeding into Philippe. So that has likely uh, been inducing some additional showers and thunderstorms across sections of Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, and even the ABC Islands. So the ABC Islands have been experiencing some heavy rain. I have been seeing the comments from you guys and I know you guys are very happy about it for the most part because it has been so hot and dry. So having that rainfall relief is definitely a plus and hopefully there hasn't been any significant flooded. But for the most part, for the Caribbean, there is going to be that continuous improvement as it relates to all that flooding induced by Philippe so it is going to be making its way further up north and as I speak let's go on to the cone forecast so here we can see that the storm is actually sustaining winds at 40 miles per hour so those hurricane hunters they have flown in and uh, found those maximum sustained winds at 40 miles per hour so some slight weakening and Philippe is barely hanging on now to that tropical storm status and it is making its way up to the north at 12 miles per hour so it's starting to move a little bit faster and should gradually pick up in that pace as we head into Saturday but then as we head into early next week it is likely to make its way up to the northwest very quickly potentially into sections of Maine and even Canada so uh, for Atlantic Canada Maine you definitely want to be on watch for this system even if it is a post tropical cyclone at the time of impact there could still be some periods of heavy rainfall those gusty winds and even those rough seas as well that's definitely going to be an issue and then if we look closely there we can see Bermuda highlighted in that blue indicating the tropical storm warning so as we head into Friday the system is likely to make its way very close and I don't uh, have it off the table that the system is not going to be making landfall it is definitely a possibility we can see that the cone uh, the, tr the current trajectory of the system has it very very close in proximity to the island so periods of heavy rainfall uh, which can induce flooding those tropical storm force winds and even some storm surge will be a possibility as Philippe makes its way into the area and so uh, I fear there guys please heed the warnings listen to your local officials and stay safe now as we take a look at the storm here we can see it on the visible satellite imagery so as I said it is pretty disheveled right now and that low level center is no longer exposed so some of that convection all those clouds they are obscuring that center and as I said we might see some strength and so conditions might be a bit more conducive to allow for the system to strengthen a bit more as of now the National Hurricane Center is not expecting winds stronger than 60 miles per hour being sustained at peak intensity now we want to go ahead and talk about what is up ahead so the next area we're likely to see development is in the Gulf of Mexico we could see something pop up and also out in the main development region we might see something try to form out there so we're going on to this map here this is the seven day graphical tropical weather outlook from NHC for the eastern Pacific now there is a disturbance highlighted in yellow given only a 10% chance to form into something within the next seven days or two days so uh, that's not going to be a bother for anyone 
on, there is Tropical Storm Lydia. So Lydia has strengthened a little bit through today. However, there is some uncertainty down the road. The GFS is taking the system uh, into the Baja California Peninsula, potentially as a strong tropical cyclone, but there is no guarantee of that happening right now. So looking at the cone forecast from the National Hurricane Center, here we can see that throughout the next five days, Lydia is expected to remain a tropical storm and uh, could gradually strengthen so significant or rapid intensification is not anticipated of the system. Now there is that next disturbance which is highlighted in red and red means that the formation chance is high so a lot of moisture right now off the Pacific coast of the Central American territories and uh, we could see that disturbance actually form into something and models have been showing that whatever develops is going to be making its way into Mexico and of course rapidly weakening due to that terrain so once these systems move inland they rapidly weaken because they're cut off from their source of uh, energy which is those very warm waters and uh, as a result they quickly weaken and dissipate so whatever is left of the system could then make its way over into the Gulf and might redevelop thereafter uh, potentially not as a strong system but models have been showing it for some time now matter of fact let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of them we're looking at the GFS first and this is as we're going to be heading into uh, the 11th of the month Wednesday the 11th of the month so there we can see that uh, there is Lydia that GFS is showing as a strong hurricane just offshore of the Baja eventually moving in there is that next system that would have developed likely a tropical storm at that point just offshore of Mexico and uh, another tropical wave to emerge off Africa getting itself together and we already see some moisture across the Gulf heading to Florida parts of western Cuba and into the Bahamas now as we're going to be heading into Sunday the 15th there we see that low pressure area forming over in the Bay of Campeche and then that uh, system developing in the main development region making its way up to the northwest. So GFS is not expecting that this is going to be continuing to the Caribbean uh, likely due to that weakened region. So if we should go back to the previous uh, graphic there we can see that weak high pressure system it is not a dominant high over the central north Atlantic. So usually when that is in place the tropical storms they're steered more on a westward track. So with all these low pressure systems out there uh, there's going to be weakened region which will allow for these developing systems to actually make their way up to the north now we're moving on to the icon and icon is showing that we're going to have two low pressure systems out there in the main development region as we're going to be heading into monday of next week the 9th of october there we have that storm developing over in the eastern pacific as well and then eventually as we head to thursday the 12th uh, we can see all that increase in moisture again across the gulf and sections of uh, florida the Bahamas and then we're seeing that low pressure area out there in the main development region again we're not seeing a dominant high pressure system out there so whatever forms if anything even forms it's likely to make its way up to the north West. But uh, in the case of some of these tropical waves not developing but then reaching the Caribbean and countering conducive conditions, then they might develop. And actually, on the ensemble tracks for both GFS and Euro, there are some hints of that potentially happening, but uh, there is no certainty right now, and I would give that a pretty low chance. And uh, that would be for the current tropical wave, which is off the African coast, the most recently emerged wave. So, no guarantee of that happening, and our uh, models have not been showing development of that tropical wave although we're seeing some hints on the ensemble tracks as we head to the euro model now euro is also showing development so there we're seeing some consistency with these models expecting that there is going to be some development of the mexican coast we'll have something moving into mexico and the remnants could make their way over into the gulf and intensify uh, we're not seeing a defined system up to this point as we head to next thursday and there we see that low pressure area form into the southwest of the cabo verde islands likely in association with that net tropical wave so here we're seeing some trends guys and to solidify on this a bit more if you watched this morning's update you would have seen where i pointed out the updated map from the climate prediction center highlighting over in parts of the eastern pacific the gulf the western caribbean for potential development and that rainfall increase so that is going to be our next area to watch that has the greatest confidence right now in terms of scene development so we'll definitely have to wait and see but of course i'm here to keep you posted as per usual so that is it for now and I hope you found this video to be quite informative but if you have any questions please do leave them in the comments I'll respond to you once I can and as always remember to be weatherwise